We have performed a great deal of Bach's music at the Toker Creek Festival for a number of reasons. It turns out that many of us who are regulars at the festival uh, have centered for one reason or another, many reasons, our musical uh, interests and development around that composer. And we find that there is some of his repertoire which is perhaps under under uh, visited in the chamber music festival realm, particularly the cantatas, the musical offering, which we have performed three times, I think, in the course of our history. Um, esoteric pieces like the Art of the Fugue, where we are also exploring it, uh, this collection in a series. Um, and of course, all of the wonderful uh, chamber music of Bach and music which arranges itself very well. Bach in arrangement, the chorale preludes, for instance, which we have played a great deal, uh, which are organ pieces, but which take on another character in a chamber music garb. So Bach uh, occurs very often among us. And I think with great uh, feeling of fellowship and shared interest and edification and pleasure. This concert deals with four Bach concertos, all of them played in chamber style with one on a part, which is one of the ways for which they may have been intended. Um, and it begins with the concerto for two pianos. Such a good concerto, we don't understand why it's not performed every week somewhere. Um, it's also a piece that can be done by the two pianists alone and uh, very satisfying in that form as well. Uh, I'll say a few things about it. The first movement is in a very grand sort of leisurely way, laid out style uh, with big sections and a wonderful chance for each player to play an occasional solo uh, among the soloists. Rather few but very strongly marked entrances of the orchestra who do not play in the second movement. They simply wait and listen to the soloist play a very beautiful kind of refrain style slow movement. And then Bach uncorks a real uh, special moment, one of his finest orchestral uh, and concerto fugues, a really big commanding piece, much bigger and broader and longer than you would expect. It's the biggest movement of the of the concerto and the orchestra, so to speak, the, the strings are saved for a couple of key moments uh, where they kind of storm in and take things up to a more heated level. Um, so the concerto and C major, uh, a really, uh, I think unjustly uh, seldom played piece. Next is the Brandenburg in, in B flat about which we had, uh, at least uh, some of us had an interesting idea. Having read certain kind of scholarly things about Bach's instrumentation and the availability of certain instruments and knowing that this was initially a, quite an early piece um, written and collected into the Brandenburgs uh, and of course uh, salted away during much of Bach's own uh, time as a active composer in Leipzig though he did get out some of those concertos for certain occasions. This piece appears to, uh, in some years, to have been meant for a contrabass, which was pitched considerably higher than the, the instruments that we usually hear. And the register in which it was to, was to play is speculated by some scholars to need to be an octave higher than normally heard. So we tried it as an experiment and you'll hear it. Um, I won't make it a judgment because you're all going to listen and uh, make your own conclusions. I think it sound, changes the sound of the piece quite, quite startlingly. It's uh, in jazz terms, much of the time, what we call a cutting session. That is to say, a lot of solo exchanges between the top two solo vi violists and they sound like they're trying to just put each other in the shade, which is an old jazz tradition, uh, mo much beloved by the more carnivorous of the jazz musicians. Um, 
And that's a lot of what goes on in this piece in both the first and the last movement. The slow movement is one of the finest sustained cantilena kind of melodies in all of Bach and both instruments, both of the soloists get to play it. The original instrumentation for this piece, which we uh, have adapted for our purposes, is really two accompanying gambas, which we will play on violas in this performance. So we then have instead a, a full band of violas. Most of the violas who were extant in Madison, Wisconsin at the time that we played this piece are, are being heard on this performance. Um, the violin concerto in A minor is one of two concertos that Bach wrote for the instrument on which he was probably in his earlier days, most often the soloist. Like a lot of composers, he gave up the violin as a solo instrument himself quite early, though he continued obviously to compose a great deal for it and moved over to the viola in his cantata performances. But I think these concertos illustrate his idea of a concerto in a very different manner than we think of it uh, in more recent times. This is a leader's concerto. This is a concert master's kind of concerto in which the main uh, thematic ideas are indeed stated uh, and developed by the soloist, but he more, he or she more or less leads the players through a piece rather than imposing his solistic personality. So it's not the hero soloist, but more the collaborator who has a kind of guiding function on these concertos. Um, Brandenburg in F is usually played uh, by a, a rather odd collection of instruments that Bach, of course, dreamed up all the way through to Brandenburg's. These are singular combinations, which we don't find really much of anywhere else. And originally Bach thought of this piece for a sky trumpet, a trumpet so high that very few examples have been even found, period examples, that can play this part. Um, it goes all the way up to a screaming high F, which is sort of the big band trumpeters, uh, modern day big band trumpeters high range. And some recent speculation has that piece being also intended on certain occasions, an octave down for a horn player. And a horn part recently turned up, which has encouraged some of us to try it in that disposition. Obviously moving one part down gives a rather different impression of the counterpoint and makes the voice, which was originally in some, in most cases, trumpet, less prominent. Um, but since we had at our disposal a very fine player, we decided to be among those who were in this era of the piece, trying it out in this disposition. And we think it works well. Um, the solo, as often in the Brandenburgs, is for a reduced, the middle movement is for a reduced complement. And it is of rather different character from the rest of the piece, which is very public and very uh, extrovert. It's one of the more beautiful uh, and economical with really very scant materials worked over very carefully. Uh, one of the most beautiful movements of the, of the concertos one of the more austere, and it's uh, speaking personally, I would say, among the various compositions of Bach, one which has become more revelatory to me as the years pass, because it is uh, something, it's something of a puzzle to be, to be solved for the listener. Um, so four concertos, all of which were performed uh, in their chamber version and, and curiously enough there's only one performer there's actually only one performer who is in all of these concertos which is ironic because it's a kind of a weekend player uh, you know they think of the weekend golfer who shoots maybe in the high 80s that's kind of the that there are violists like that and i will be in all four of these performances playing uh in playing some role, which is I've always felt in in a much much misused word, rather ironic. 
not a very exact use of that word, but let's just say curious and peculiar. Um, but I'm, I'm getting a, 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 kick of, a kick out of it when I hear these, uh, these pieces on our CD, which of course you can order or find from the management. Uh, they're all, all on one CD um, in their remarkable vitality and splendor. 